It's Tuesday, and that means supper night at the Church of the Good Samaritan, where recently parishioners traded in their kitchen aprons for naloxone kits, as the purpose of the church changes with the needs of its neighbors. It is the most encouraging thing that I've done in my 25 years of ministry, coming alongside these guys. I mean, we're just, we're loving them. Uh, and I think that they're loving us. And of course, we have to deal with all the issues of mental health and addictions. Today, salad is on the menu. The offshoot of the Anglican Church hasn't just opened its kitchen, it's opened its doors to a new shelter upstairs. So we've got lockers for all of our clients, so everybody's got a safe place to sort of stuff. Ashley Ben Said runs Safe Haven, a nonprofit that recently won a government tender for 40 shelter beds and a warming center on the second floor of the church. We have been here in the rectory since last summer. The rectory will now transition into 22 female beds for uh, clients that are female, transgender, and non-binary to create a safe space. So we're trying to cover the bases with everybody, get everybody in out of the cold before the winter comes. Ben Saeed is a big player in the emergency shelter system that the government funds and depends on. She operates this nonprofit and two other for-profit shelters in St. John's. It's not just single men, often battling mental health and addictions, who are in great need of shelter. Ben Said says she's noticed a startling jump in families in need of help. People are working minimum wage jobs and they just can't keep up with the rent costs and then they're just, you know, in this situation that they didn't anticipate being in with kids. All of this costs money. In one year, the provincial government spent over $5.2 million on for-profit and hotel housing, the majority without wraparound services, and spent about the same for nonprofits like The Gathering Place, Salvation Army, and Safe Haven, filling a void that the housing corporation doesn't fill itself. I hold myself at a high, at a high standard. Um, we have a social worker on staff, we have a clinical psychologist on staff, we have housing support workers on staff. I love it, man. It's beautiful. <laughs> I can sleep here. <laughs> Billy Butler is homeless but happy. Oh, yes, look, she got her full. Because if it weren't for safe haven, he says... Probably in the tent somewhere, right? Or out on the street looking for somewhere to sleep every night. Butler is from Bell Island. He was in a serious motorcycle accident in 2019 and is unable to work. He moved to St. John's for medical appointments and fell victim to what's become an all too common story. The prices were outrageous, right? Like bachelor apartments is well over $1,000 and then getting money for food, everything was just outrageous here in St. John's. He says this won't be forever. One day he'll get his own spot. Shelter life, he says, was never in the plan, but he's thankful for now. This is nice. Not everyone wants to stay in congregate living. That's one of the messages from this protest at Confederation Building. So this will be used, uh, that shelter living shouldn't be considered permanent housing. For Ashley Ben Said, shelters aren't in her long-term plan either, but says they are necessary now. As the cost of living goes up, vacancies go down, and people are fighting for a place to live. She's applied to build a 20-unit affordable apartment building. I'd like for all of us to be able to come together and create more permanent housing solutions, because without doing that, you know, we're not going to we're not going to get ahead of it. Ariana Kelland, CBC News, St. John's.